Hi everyone, I'm Nancy Littlejohn with Nancy Littlejohn Fine Art in Houston, Texas. We're here today with the artist Sarah Sudoff to talk about her current show in the gallery, El Recuerdo. So I'm going to ask um, Sarah, first of all, what is El Recuerdo? What does that translate to and what does that mean to you? Uh, thank you for having me and You're thanks so for welcome. organizing the talk and thanks to everyone for coming. Um, so when you had asked me back in March uh, to respond to Deborah's work and I started thinking about strong women in my life, looking at Deborah's paintings, thinking about these female voyagers, um, where were they going, what journey were they on, and thinking about who in my life could I relate to. And I immediately um, was thinking about my grandmother or my abuela. This is my mother's mother, um, Jorge Lina. And she came over from Cuba uh, in the 50s with my mother and traveled back and forth um, from Cuba to America several times. And then in the 80s, uh, she went back and actually rescued more family members. And so in terms of coming up with a title, um, I was not on that ship with her on any of these um, on any of these journeys, uh, I've only been told about the stories or, or this part of her life. And so I was thinking about memory or memories. And La Moria is also memory in Spanish, but El Recuerdo is like remembrance and recollection and um, reflecting on maybe somebody else's life or their memory. So that's where the name came from. So um, let's talk about inherited memories and how they relate to the materials that you use in the performances? Sure. Um, I've been interested in the idea of um, inherited memories. A couple of artist friends of mine happen to also be working with that idea. And it's it, I've never made work about my Cuban heritage, but I've also not made work about inherited my own inherited memories. Um, I have worked with material before. Um, uh, such as textiles uh, that people have died on. So the, the the last memories of those people, I have done work sort of in that vein. But I was thinking about my grandmother and my mother's stories and how those experiences um, are funneled through me or passed down, either both through images I've seen, stories I've been told, and also just inherently how I feel and move through the world. Um, I, I I believe that a, a lot of the traumas, but also a lot of the successes um, that my grandmother and mother have um, had in their life, I, I feel like I, they're inside of me and I embody them in different ways. And um, my grandmother was a very fierce individual and I, I hope that I embody that, you know, that part of her personality. And then regarding the materials, um, I had never worked with rope before. I have worked with water before, but in looking at Deborah's work and thinking about this voyage that my grandmother was on, um, the type of life that she led, very um, simple life, um, wanted to work with materials that were either handmade, such as the rope and the cloth that's used in the performance, um, and then, of course, water. And this is... Um an example of that with this cloth that you mm -hmm. took pictures of, but you also used this cloth to wash. Right. So I, um, I, I was looking for something that had maybe a Cuban uh, uh, relationship to my Cuban heritage, which I did not find, but I did take just simple white cloth to wash the grave. Um, I, I wanted it to be marked with the cleaning process. And so uh, it happened to be there was trees at the grave site and all this um, pollen and debris that was, a, was more easily uh, shown in a, in a, on a white cloth. So that's why I chose the white. And also the dress I was wearing um, reminded me of a sail. It also reminded me of Cuban um, dresses or attire. And so there was a, a relationship between, um, yes, the white dress and the white cloth that I was using. Can I ask you about um, some of the photographs in her exhibit are of her legs mm -hmm. because you had been on your knees and tell me why did you think that was a poignant moment or why did you decide to capture that in a photograph? Sure, I, when I originally thought about washing or visiting the grave and cleansing the grave, I didn't recall what the ground was made of. I knew that there was some type of material and I was so focused on the cleansing process 
Um, and as I set up the camera and I'm going through these, this performance, and I did it you know, two or three times, I recorded it um, by myself, and I, I remember getting up and realizing how much pain I was in, which during the performance I was not paying attention to at all, but as soon as I stopped, I could feel feel that my legs were in pain, and I remember lifting up my dress and going, oh, well, that would be why. Mm -hmm. And um, it, for me, as a performance artist, um, and I've done other pieces and other performances where my body is the material or is the data, and I've impacted my body in different ways um, through a mask on my face or bricks on my chest, and this was in line with other works that I'd already done, self-portraits, um, where I'd marked my body in different ways, and it felt that it was almost this happy surprise, this unexpected moment that I didn't intend to capture, but found. Amazing. So I'm sure you all have gathered by now that we asked Sarah to come in and interpret these paintings that are very much about the goddess, about the journey, about uh, going from this world into the underworld. And she really kind of took that concept and ran with it so beautifully and poignantly. So my question really is, how do you prepare for these performances? <laughs> um, so for this one, I did a lot of research, thinking about Deborah's work, thinking about how I could respond to it, um, looking at other performance artists, what they had done. I knew I wanted to do something um, related to water, related to voyage. And um, when I walked into the space, actually the first day I met you, I realized what a gorgeous space this is. and also notice the I beam right <laughs> and Need how to know how, how lucky that your gallery has an I beam actually several I beams and looking at the work having a discussion with you doing the research of other performance artists um, I knew that I wanted to you know work with this I beam in some capacity I didn't really know what but I wanted to respond not only to Deborah's work but also to the space and the amount of room that I could utilize in, in, in the gallery so um, in terms of preparation, it was not only doing the research, doing something very site specific, but also preparing my body for, for, for the performance. So I was doing a lot of Pilates yeah, and yoga yeah, and right. running and massage Amazing. <laughs> and acupuncture, right. um, just trying to get um, into the right headspace, but also the right physical space. And then I was also working with Shibari instructors and riggers to um, get used to that, what that pressure felt like on my body and how it restricted my body. So um, Sarah actually came into the gallery to talk to me about something entirely different. And <laughs> then suddenly we started talking about the fact that she was a performance artist. I love interdisciplinary work and um, I want to know what that is to you, like bringing that interdisciplinary quality to a space like this, because you give a performance artist or an interdisciplinary artist an opportunity, and you can give them one word, and they will interpret it 10 different ways instead of one way. So why don't you tell us how you bring all of that together? Sure. Um, I... Uh, have been a photographer for 20 years, and as, as much as I love photography, I've started to expand into sculpture, performance, video, sound, and feel that when I move off the wall, not to say that I don't enjoy and, and, and love two-dimensional work, obviously I've got three photographs in, in this project, but I love being able to have that interplay with the audience and with the work. So the, the two-dimensional work informs the three-dimensional work, and that informs the performance or the sound or the video or the sculpture um, in different ways. And I'm an educator, and I know that not every student learns the same way. Right. So why should every person that walks into a gallery see work? exactly the same way. And so for me, over the last few years, I've started to incorporate other mediums to make sure that any audience member that walks in and sees an exhibition of mine, there's an entry point for them. Right, right. Um, you know, they may be more attracted to the live performance versus the photograph. And um, 
also as an artist, my work for me is so personal and so emotional that moving between mediums allows me to express myself in different ways, but also connect more viscerally with you as the, um, as the viewer. Well, I think that her performance, if any of you all got to see it, was quite profound in its interpretation, the El Recuerdo and the Nomad Exquisite. So I think we've, we've already touched a little bit mm -hmm. on what those two things mean together. Um, why don't we talk about um, this past year and being in quarantine and COVID, and this is the was the first um, open exhibition that we've had at the gallery and we had a performance. Some <laughs> artists who I've worked with, you guys, it's almost like they've been in a cave for the last year and they're just sort of coming out and taking you know, the blinders off their eyes. They're not sure how they've interpreted the past year yet, they're still processing. Some artists have been working diligently the whole time and know exactly what they have to say. So I wanna know, I know, it's, it, it's all over the map. So yeah. I wanna know how this affected you during this time. And how did it feel to come out right out of the gate and do a performance, <laughs> right? Yeah, yes. With masks. <laughs> um, Okay, I'll try and unpack all that. Yeah. Um, the last year has been very difficult, um, as it has been for everyone. And But I feel very fortunate in the fact that I'm an artist. And so I was able to process in ways that maybe other people weren't able to process. I did a couple of performances and documentation through photography of a which I know some of you guys saw at the Blaffer, um, where I had bricks on my chest, um, called 60 Pounds of Pressure. And then I did another piece with the masks, um, Will You Hug Me Forever? So I was able to interpret and, um, and express to not only my children, myself, but also my community what it was that I was going through and be able to use that as a form of communication and being able to relate to other people. Uh, and, and through those works, I was able to connect with women and other artists all over the country, which really was a lifeline for me. Um, and that is because I, you know, took what was happening and funneled it through the lens of an artist. So I feel very fortunate that I had that capability and I was at home. Um, I used what was available to me, my body. Yeah. Um, Made the best use of available resources. Yeah. A camera, <laughs> a camera backdrop in my body. So. Right. right. <laughs> and, and the mask. Um, and bricks. But, um... And then, sorry, your second okay. question. Okay. Like your second sorry. question was um, um, just how this past year has affected you. Oh, no, you were asking when I came back into the gallery what what that was like. Right. Uh, it was. It's funny. I I designed the performance thinking that people would mill around me while they looked at Deborah's work. So I was trying to think of, okay, how could I interact with the space? How could I do something that's poetic and gestural, but not over the top, that informs and lifts up and complements the existing work, and, and then also allowing people to come in at any moment, turn around and watch me, and then continue on with the opening. Mm -hmm. And um, that's not what happened. That's not what happened. <laughs> that's no. not what happened. No. But that's what I had anticipated. Right. And um, what happened was, if you weren't here, is no one moved no. for half an hour. They were riveted. I mean, you could have heard a pin drop. It's almost like people didn't even want to exhale because they were afraid that they would miss something. It was really quite mm -hmm. profound. And mm -hmm. I have to say, again, uh, Sarah came in to have a different conversation with me. Mm -hmm. And as soon as we started to visit, I thought we need to be doing something else. We need to be working together in a different way. And I just knew very intuitively how talented she was. So we gave her this enormous project and she had to implement in a short period of time. So my question is now, have your thoughts on this particular interpretation changed since you mm -hmm. originally decided what you wanted to do? Are you seeing it differently now? Yeah, it's been, yes, yes yeah. to all of that. Okay. Um, but it's been really great to talk to some of you who were here or who have seen it through Instagram or on my website to learn how you viewed or what your experience or your interpretation was of it because I knew that I was coming from this, this point or these memories, my own story, but what are you bringing to the table? What are your stories that right. you're interpreta interpreting the work with? So it's been fascinating 
to speak to people and just understand my own work through someone else's eyes, right. which is so fascinating. Um, and so the performance I'm actually going to do again um, sometime this fall, and I'm really excited about that because the opportunity to do it here, I know what worked, what I liked, what I didn't like, how I would add on to it. Um, I'm very interested in actually ha something I wanted to do here, but I wasn't sure if people were ready, was an interactive component. Right. And I think now that the world is opening back up and the vaccines, that people would be more inclined and in, to engage with me. And so I actually want to have um, the audience give me ropes that I add. So by the end of the performance, I'm carrying more weight. Oh, wow. Uh, and okay. then also have a live singer. Amazing. Yeah. So when she did the performance here, it was almost like the audience created this I don't know why I want to call it like a ring of fire. Mm -hmm. It was almost uh, this ritualistic thing that happened. And I'm sure it will never happen that way again mm -hmm. because that, that is just art and people's interpretation of the moment when they're in it. So I guess um, my next question is about wanting to continue this body mm -hmm. of work and what you've already said is that you will. Yes, uh, one thing I, I can add though is the, the video at the grave I've never done um, a performance where I've gone back over and over and re-recorded it, mm -hmm. and that's something I'm interested in doing with the with visiting my grandmother's grave. I don't know if it would be quarterly, yearly, but to have a collection of of visit visitations mm -hmm. at the grave where I rewash and recare for my grandmother um, through this act over time and then I can foresee an installation where it's multiple channels or multiple video screens showing me at different times in my life going back to the same site again. Amazing. So okay. then I'm going to ask sort of a, a mundane question but people really enjoy knowing what is her inspiration or who are the artists who she admires and I can't help but think of Anna Mandieta when I think of her work. And there mm -hmm. was just a film screening um, at the Aurora Picture Show recently. I don't know if any of you all got to see that, but she's this amazing, <laughs> famous <laughs> Latino <laughs> artist. And yeah. I'm just wondering who are your favorites? Well, I'm just saying she's one of mine. Yes, yes. obviously she's one of mine as well. And okay. I was fortunate enough to go see uh, the screenings at Aurora. But uh, Teresa Margulies, um, mm -hmm. Marina Abramovich, totally, yeah. Janine and Tony, these are all performance artists working mm -hmm. with performance and or sculpture and video. Uh, Kiki Smith. Yeah. 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 You have to be brave to do this work. Yeah. You and do. Um, uh, Regina Galindo. Um, yeah, the, mainly, I wouldn't say just performance artists, but at this moment in my life, I'm gravitating towards female performance artists. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, you know, at other points in my life, it, you know, I've um, taken more inspiration from different artists. But right now, that's where I'm at. I love it. Yeah. So you guys, I'm sure you understand how, uh, as a performance artist, it takes a lot of courage, and mm -hmm. you have to be brave to put yourself out there, um, just like any other art form, a musician or a singer or anything like that. Mm -hmm. So I just admire you yes. so much. And the work is mm -hmm. extraordinary. And I know that your future is incredibly bright, incredibly Thank bright. You. Okay. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. It was a great conversation. Thank you. Oh, wow. <laughs> that was fun. Huh? That was fun. Yeah. That was great.